friends welcome to my channel today i am going to enlighten you on a compact machine which is not uncommon to most of you uh, you can use this beautiful piece of machine in your warehouse if you wanted to lift your pallet you can use this machine on your farm for agricultural applications you can use this machine to prepare your land for growing crops uh, you can use this machine to clean up, I mean, clean out your temporary structures on your farm. I mean, people make barns and stables on farms for storing uh, hay, grains, or cattle used on farms. I myself have stayed on barns in my childhood, which was located uh, on our paddy field where we used to cultivate rice. This machine was never in my imagination uh, during that time of life. In our farm, we were doing all work manually and uh, if we had such a wonderful machine, we should have use uh, with a bucket or a bale to do a variety of jobs. You can use this amazing piece of machine for preparing soil uh, with fertilizers. Uh, you can use it for cutting wood into small pieces. Uh, instead of using a wheelbarrow, uh, you can use this unique machine for uh, transporting uh, gravel and your working tools. You may not believe that this machine can be used for cutting small trees precisely, uh, cutting down grass uh, which are grown to certain height. In this case, you will be using uh, rotary cutters attached to this machine. On most job sites, you can see this machine for carrying material around the site. Uh, by using this machine, you can level a ground, uh, fill up trenches on the ground. Uh, you know, this is what we call as grading. This small piece of machine has great potential in uh, construction sites uh, for digging, trenching or excavation. Uh, you can use it as a brush uh, for removing uh, debris on the land. Uh, again, you can use this uh, to support road work for paving, uh, demolition or milling jobs. Uh, you will be using uh, with this machine sometimes a cement mixture or a miller, I mean to remove a portion of uh, paved area on the road. Basically, this machine uh, you can use you know, precisely to demolish uh, tight areas. I mean, you know, buildings which are very close to each other. I just mentioned a few of several possibilities with this wonderful product. Can you guess what this machine is? To help you better, I would like to tell you something more. This compact machine can be a lighter one for using in tight spaces where you you know you need uh, better maneuverability. Uh, you can use a bigger size for uh, major demolition activities. You may use a minimum, I mean medium size unit uh, where you you can't use a backhoe loader. The difference between uh, different sizes of this machine uh, is their capacity. Uh, weight, power, and of course the frame size. Now you are sure it is not about a backer loader. Let me give you some more clues. This equipment is available either with wheels or tracks. I think you got it. Okay, it is a metal structure with two arms on each side. You know, they are hydraulic amps. The main attachment to this machine is a bucket and if you take the lightest machine, uh, it can take around 1.2 ton. Uh, using this machine, you can turn uh, the left wheel and uh, the right wheel independently. Uh, when you turn wheels on both sides at different speeds, uh, there is a tendency to drag or skid. Yes. This great product is called skid steer loader. A skid steer loader is a compact machine 
and for multiple applications. Uh, it is best suited for small working areas, but it can also be used uh, in different terrain and uh, it is uh, maneuverable. You will be seeking, uh, I mean, you will be seeing a skid loader in most of the construction, agricultural and landscaping project sites. Let us see what is inside a skid steel loader. You know, in early days, traditional lever and pulley mechanism was used to control the functions. In these days, it has been replaced by joystick controls. Once you sit inside the cab, you will find out two joystick controls on your left and right side. The left joystick control is for you to move the loader forward or backward and left or right. Okay, the joystick control on the right side is to control the boom and the backhead functions. You know, both these joysticks have hydraulic valves. On your left hand side, as you operate the joystick, there will be hydraulic fluid flowing into the motor for controlling uh, the movement of the wheels. On your right hand side, as you operate hydraulic fluid flowing into hydraulic cylinders and then uh, the bucket can be operated. The bucket will be moving either upward or downward or tilting forward or reverse. So what you learn from these actions is that there is no proper steering mechanism in skid steer loaders. The wheels are not rotating but we can make them to skid or drag. You may think that this kind of skidding or dragging can lead to damage of the machine but of course that's not the case. You know the torsional force is developed due to torque uh, which causing stress. In our daily life uh, we apply torsional forces when we squeeze our wet clothes while washing. Uh, in case of an engine, it is giving torsional forces to the drive axle. In fact, uh, it does not damage the skid steer loader because you have strong wheel bearings and a rigid body. So it prevents torsional forces from making uh, damage. As I said before, some skid uh, steer loaders are fitted with wheels and some have got tracks which are made of rubber uh, or metal. Let us see where those machines are applied. If you work on any event surface, rough terrain areas or slopes, you can use track type where the weight is distributed. If you are on an any, I mean, even surface, paved or uh, level ground wheel type is convenient. If you look at the commercial side, it is cheaper to maintain the wheel type. You know, in wheel type, uh, you can clean uh, the undercarriage easily compared to the track type. Your fuel consumption will be less with wheels uh, than tracks. If you ask me, which type of skid steel loader is suitable for you? I would say it depends on the nature of the project. A few points that people normally consider while choosing a skid steel loader uh, can be shared with you. First of all, you must know the rated capacity of the machine. Uh, you should know the load on your bucket that can tilt your machine. This is understood once you keep weight on the bucket at maximum lift, I mean lifting reach and uh, understanding the moment, you know, uh, your rear wheels, for, you know, tend to lift up. The safe operating capacity is normally 50% uh, of the load uh, that tend to uh, tilt the machine. Knowing your safe load capacity, I mean safe operating capacity is not the only variable 
uh, you should consider. You should also consider some other factors such as the weight of the machine, uh, wheel base, uh, axle torque and also the hydraulic system. If you have multi working tools to be run on the machine, then engine horsepower and hydraulic horsepower are very important. This is because the engine is generating drawbar horsepower in drive circuit uh, and implement the pump. Those pumps and circuits uh, generate hydraulic horsepower which is essential uh, for working tools. You know some manufacturers include additional gear pump to the flow circuit which increases uh, speed of the working tool and also the hydraulic horsepower. Technically most people know that it is high flow hydraulics. Uh, another important point in selection process is the kind of lifting pattern. You know in the industry there are two kinds of lifting patterns I mean designs one is radial lift and the other one is a vertical lift. Let me explain to you in detail uh, on my next occasion. Uh, please share your comments with me on this video. God willing, uh, we will be meeting very soon with the next part. And this is Tantitan Kasim signing off. Goodbye.